We start in Arizona tonight where the state legislature is grappling with the pressing issue of foul-mouthed public school teachers. This is Arizona State Senator Lori Klein. She's a Republican. Senator Klein has introduced state legislation, a bill in Arizona that would punish teachers for using speech that violates the FCC's standards for network television shows. So Senator Klein wants to stop the scourge of teachers cursing. As her bill is written, this would have the Arizona state government regulating the language of teachers, not just while they were in the classroom, but anywhere in their whole lives. So, math teacher, if you hit your thumb with a hammer, the state government of Arizona will be listening in to make sure you only say dang, or they'll leash, they'll unleash, you know, all heck on you, I guess. <laughs> It's sort of hard to be really angry at somebody if you've barred the whole swearing thing. Anyway, if, if that's not a big enough role for um, uh, a government for you, there is a man in Virginia I'd also like you to meet. His name is Virginia Delegate Bob Marshall. He's also a Republican. Delegate Bob Marshall once tried to outlaw swearing in email, um, not just by teachers, not just by any one group of people, not just in a particular kind of email. Bob Marshall proposed that Virginia state government outlaw profanity by anyone in any email sent from the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now, it's one thing to think that swearing is bad. Swearing is bad. Uh, it's another thing to say that swearing is bad or to ask other people not to do it. But to dislike swearing so much that you would expand the role of government, you would create a government so intrusive that the government would monitor your speech and read your emails in order to prosecute you for swearing, few people are that dedicated to stamping out curse words. But that is what Arizona is considering today for its teachers on the state's 100th birthday. And that is how seriously Bob Marshall took the problem of Virginia's email swearing epidemic back in the 1990s. This year, Virginia delegate Watch Your Mouth Bob Marshall is championing another really, 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 really big government conservative cause. It's an anti-abortion, anti-birth control personhood bill that would define a person under essentially the entire code of Virginia state law as beginning at the moment of conception. You might remember the whole personhood idea from its double-digit defeat on the Mississippi ballot last November, or its 46-point defeat in Colorado in 2008, or its 42-point defeat in Colorado again in 2010. What Bob Marshall is proposing in Virginia is essentially the same thing that has been defeated by voters in Mississippi and in Colorado. A key element to personhood's big loss in those states was the implication spelled out quite graphically on this billboard that went up during the Mississippi campaign. It was the implication that the personhood thing had for birth control. If you grant a fertilized egg the rights of a person, you might just be banning not only all abortion in all circumstances, but also hormonal birth control, which is the kind of birth control that most American women use. The personhood folks know they have been losing uh, in part because they seem to want to ban birth control. In Mississippi, for example, once they seem to be losing ground on the birth control is murder argument, uh, they changed their personhood campaign's language uh, on their website about birth control. Early in the campaign, they had listed on their website all the kinds of birth control that they opposed. But after a couple of weeks, that language mysteriously disappeared and much softer language appeared in its place, sort of playing down the birth control issue, saying it's not that they were opposed to birth control. They just didn't necessarily advocate for the use of contraceptives. In Virginia, the Republicans backing the personhood measure in that state had a chance to take the birth control argument off the table entirely. A Democratic delegate, Vivian Watts, tried to attach an amendment to the Virginia bill that would declare that nothing in that bill could be construed to outlaw any form of legal contraception. And Republicans in the Virginia House of Delegates voted no on that by a huge margin. The vote was 64 to 34 against taking birth control out of the equation. So in Virginia, Republicans had a wide open opportunity to say this personhood thing, this bill is only about banning abortion. We do not want to ban birth control. They had the opportunity to say that and they rejected it hugely. Virginia Republicans have watched this personhood measure go down over and over again across the country, in, in large part because it is seen as a way to ban birth control. But they're not even contesting that idea in Virginia. Ban birth control? Sure. Sounds like a plan.
That is what passed the Virginia House of Delegates today, the anti-abortion, anti-birth control personhood bill. And now uh, it's headed over to the Virginia Senate. In recent years, the Senate in Virginia has been uh, kind of the brakes for this sort of legislation in the Commonwealth of Virginia. The Senate was under Democratic control, and it had essentially been a cooling off chamber for Virginia conservatives um, really intrusive big government proposals on social issues like this. But now Republicans are in control of the state Senate and Virginia politics watchers say that this personhood bill has a pretty good chance in the Senate. If it passes the House and passes the Senate, Virginia's uber conservative governor, Bob McDonnell, will say nothing more than that he plans to take a look at it if it reaches his desk. But wait, there's more. Um, Not only are Republicans of Virginia moving to pass a bill that could ban birth control and that they explicitly acknowledge could ban birth control, Virginia Republicans have already passed in both chambers a bill that would have the state government force Virginia women into having medically unnecessary, unwanted vaginal ultrasounds. That's a physical penetration of the body ultrasound by state order without your consent. That would be forced on you as a condition of your being allowed to have an abortion in the state of Virginia. I don't mean to be unnecessarily graphic about this, but the legislation is really specific about how detailed the ultrasound has to be. And so for the vast majority of women seeking an abortion in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the state government will specifically require a physical internal probe for which there is no medical reason and for which neither you or your doctor has uh, a choice. The AP, um, AP reported on this today. And you know, you know how I'm, I'm a highlighter-based life form? I'm always reading with either a pencil or highlighter in my hand. You know it's an incredible story when you are reading a like three-paragraph news story and you're highlighting the important parts and you end up highlighting the entire story. So just from the Associated Press today, quoting from them directly, legislation that has advanced on the strength of a GOP majority would force women to undergo a transvaginal ultrasound that produces fetal images. An amendment by Del- uh, Delegate David Englund, Del- Democrat of Alexandria, would have allowed medical professionals to determine whether images can be obtained without being penetrated by equipment used in the ultrasound, women would have to give written consent to such a probe under England's amendments, but not to sonograms that aren't invasive. The amendment failed on a 64 to 34 vote, setting up the bill for final House passage. So Republicans in Virginia seriously uh, want a government so big that it can literally get inside individual citizens' genitals by force and without their consent. That bill, the Let the Government Inside Your Body bill, passed the Republican-controlled Virginia House of Delegates today. It has already passed the Republican-controlled Virginia Senate. And Republican Governor Bob McDonnell says he will sign it. Virginia's governor is, of course, one of the leading candidates on the presumed vice presidential shortlist for Republicans this year. Sure, all of the Republican candidates for president have endorsed the ban on birth control personhood thing. But now one of the men, one of the men considered most likely to be chosen as vice president has the chance and says he will (laughs) sign this forced ultrasound thing into law. He will have a chance to actually sign into law a birth control ban. Government-mandated, medically unnecessary transvaginal ultrasounds from the state of Virginia. So that's going to be the choice for voters in November, right? Let's say they pick Bob McDonald, right? So are you going to go with the it's okay to outlaw birth control, anti-family planning presidential ticket that wants to force its way into your, right? Uh, Or are you going to go with the pro-birth control, pro-family planning presidential ticket that would like to leave your to you?